Well, welcome back. We've been talking about the omnibus bill this morning. The Senate passed the $1.7 trillion spending bill yesterday, including help from 18 Republican senators. This after a fight over Title 42 stalled votes. Joining me right now is Ohio Congressman and House Financial Services Committee member Warren Davidson. Congressman, thanks very much for joining us this morning. Your reaction to this bill passing the Senate yesterday? Uh, good morning, Maria. I mean, it's disappointing that it passed, but it's even more disappointing that 18 Republicans crossed over to provide support for it. The justifications ring pretty hollow. I mean, we are going to have a Republican majority shortly, just days away. And if we could have got a CR into the first quarter uh, at any point, we could have at least worked to put language that makes Joe Biden secure the border. We all know it's not secure, and it's a crisis all over the country. Well, I mean, I don't understand these Republican senators claim to care about the wide open border and its impact, the fentanyl flowing through, and they completely ignore it and go sign into, uh, they go past this bill that gives all these earmarks that have nothing to do with the border. Yeah, I mean, the earmarks are appalling and certainly out of line with most of our communities. And fundamentally, it looks like every member of Congress wants to be a mayor or a town council person. They're putting all these little projects into every little town and burg in their district. And the reality is that's what the state legislature is supposed to do. That's what communities are supposed to do uh, it, it, with local dollars. And a lot of them still have COVID dollars. We could have simply passed a language that said, hey, the money you've still got left over from COVID, you can use, but you're accountable to your local population for how you use it. There's tons of cash still sitting out there unspent because of the strings attached from COVID. Yeah, I mean, the amendments introduced on Title 42 in the omnibus bill failed uh, and were not part of the final vote, Congressman. What can you tell us about what Senator Mike Lee was trying to do and what happens next for the finances needed to secure the border? Well, Mike Lee had the original amendment that would have had the CR till March 3rd. That would have been a much better path. Republican majority could have worked something uh, to try to get there. Yes, of course, we might have reached an impasse with Democrats and wound up with a CR for the rest of the year. But the reality is we could have pushed Republican priorities. They would have continued to push this. This is just a Democrat bill. It contains very few Republican priorities at the end of the day. Uh, and we had a chance with Mike Lee's effort there. Then he tried to push on Title 42 because even the Democrats in Texas are saying, look, we got to have help. You know, the mayor of New York City is saying, we've got to have help. Meanwhile, senators like mine, Sherrod Brown, think that it's just a far right uh, conspiracy theory to say that the border is not secure. We all know it isn't. And we all know that the, the fentanyl flowing across the border uh, is being made by chemical companies in China. We should be putting sanctions on them. We should be treating the, ter the, uh, the, the cartels as enemies of our country, whether they're not really terrorists, but they should have a designation akin to ISIS or Al Qaeda. We should be using intelligence and sanctions to stop them and anyone who prov provide material support to the cartel itself or any of the leadership in those cartels. We have to cut this off and the cartels are yeah. making a fortune smuggling people and drugs across our border. I mean, but why aren't we, Congressman? I don't understand this. Everything you just said makes perfect sense. I mean, the fentanyl is being made by chemicals in China. These chemical companies are sending this stuff out there. The Mexican cartels are putting it together to make fentanyl to push it into America. It's killing American citizens. Why aren't we doing anything about it? Why aren't we doing yeah. anything about the wide open border? What's the motivation of your colleagues not to do something about this? I don't understand. Yeah, the people in my district don't either, Maria. I mean, we, we all are aligned. Even, you know, Democrats in my part of the state <clears throat> agree with this problem and, the, and with this solution. Uh, and sometimes you have to step back and go, are people actually trying to create a big black market? Is there some sort of hidden pro-cartel lobby in Washington, D.C.? Because that's the biggest beneficiaries from this. It makes no sense whatsoever for the interest of the United States of America to refuse to secure our border. And yes, we can have people come legally. We have about a million new Americans every year. We can reform our immigration system, but we're never going to agree to do that unless we secure our border. What are your expectations on finance? You're in the House Financial Services Committee. Are you expecting a recession in 2023? What will you be prioritizing in that committee? Yeah, look, I, I hope to be one of the subcommittee chairmen. We'll see how uh, our leadership races go and we come into uh, the first quarter of the year. Either way, you're going to see a lot of oversight for the Securities and Exchange Commission. In particular, you look at the FTX fraud. How did that go undetected? 
and what kind of mechanisms do we need to create? Uh, you know, some of my colleagues and I have been working to provide regulation for the crypto space since 2018, and it's totally bipartisan. It's really not partisan, uh, yeah. but we have factions uh, refusing to do it. So you're going to look at it, oversight and regulatory clarity and a lot of attention given to what is a fiduciary uh, in the midst of all this ESG kind of woke governance models uh, being pushed out there. Well, the fall on FTX co-founder Sam Bankman-Fried was released uh, on what they're saying was a $250 million bail, although Dagan just uh, laid that out, that it's actually not $250 million. Former Alameda CEO Caroline Ellison and FTX co-founder Gary Wang both pled guilty to fraud charges. Uh, how do you see this situation? Well, it's hard to it's hard to look at the facts that we already know, and with the acting CEO coming in to kind of restructure in his testimony before our committee just uh, you know on the 13th of December, it's hard to look at this and say uh, you know Sam Bankman Fried has not committed massive fraud, uh, and and the people around him did. So he defrauded people out of eight billion plus dollars. Uh, you look at Bernie Madoff, he got a 150-year sentence for that. The idea that this guy's released on any level of bond is, is pretty questionable. So I, I do hope he uh, stays in custody at some point. Uh, he stands trial, and he gets a fair trial. And I look forward to seeing how the facts of the case come out. For regulators, well, well, we need to look at yeah. this. Mm -hmm. And see how it, how it's gone undetected, and make sure that we've got the safeguards in place, so that look, this is a very promising sector, and a lot of people are painting the whole sector as flawed. And the reality, this is just old school fraud. That's what the CEO of uh, FTX now, the former you know restructuring uh, king of uh, Enron, he's like, this is worse yeah. than Enron, but it's just basic fraud, not wow. not uh, a failure of crypto. Unbelievable. Congressman, it's good to see you. Thanks very much for your work. Warren Davidson joining us this morning. We will talk soon. Thank you, sir. Merry Christmas. Thank you, Maria. Merry Quick Christmas. Break.